Hi Nympham, welcome to FPL 5 Things. Fergie has battled through like an absolute trooper to be with us today, so let's get him in and discuss some of the main points that face us ahead of game week 7. Hi Fergie, what's occurring buddy? How are you feeling? You've been going through the wars the last week I hear. Not too bad thanks then. Yeah, I had uh, Covid in the last week but I'm Oof. slowly uh, recovering and, uh, and getting back to full fitness. I've probably gone from a red flag to a yellow flag I think <laughs> but I'm, def I'm definitely getting there. I'm ho hoping to be good uh, for game week seven and fit. Good, good. Oh, well I'm so grateful for you doing this even though you know you've been suffering through so I really appreciate it. So we'll just uh, whiz through quickly so I'm not keeping you too long. And get started with our game week seven captaincy options. So uh, there's a couple of big guns in the mix this week and it looks like Salah's kind of missing out to Ronaldo and Lukaku. So what are you saying on captaincy this week? It's a really, really hard one this week. I was looking at kind of the stats, you know, the XG um, of Man United and Chelsea and also looking at the XGC of you know um, of their opponents and, and also looking at the eye test as well you know it did, I, I did think that um, Southampton were you know were quite poor on the weekend but mm -hmm. statistically they've actually been okay because they kept a clean sheet away to Man City a couple of game weeks ago as well statistically and eye test it's, it's really really tough I think that we need to captain this week so a lot of managers I think including me and you actually Nim are yeah. actually having to make a decision this week not purely just on the captaincy this week but which of Ronaldo and Lukaku we're looking yeah. to hold going forward mm -hmm. and that for me is actually going to dictate my captain? my play this week and who to captain this week because I don't think there's a standout captain so I'm perfectly going for Lukaku I think because I want to hold him going forward yeah I think Ronaldo is potentially you know is a good option, but mm -hmm. I do like Lukaku's increased um, threat of assists, of which he does have over Ronaldo. And I also thought that United looked a bit toughless against Villa. Ronaldo looked very, very quiet mm -hmm. last week. Um, another one I'm interested in, again, you know, we said this, this last week, Antonio is just... Our maverick you know, you know, He's the man of the moment. He's the man <laughs> he of the is. moment. He um, is. Home to Brentford, you know, who play mm -hmm. a very kind of attacking, aggressive style of play. And he's another one I'm interested in. Who's your armband on this week? Yeah, so I'm very similar to you, still deciding on Ronaldo and Lukaku. It's a difficult one. Southampton have conceded seven goals this season. Oh, it's seven. Um, but yeah, no, I think, um, you know, Lukaku looks good for it. And I think the way Jimenez was, you know, with bullying that Southampton defence there on the weekend, I can't imagine Lukaku not you know doing that and and more really when it comes to the Southampton defense so I'm very tempted by the Ronaldo to Lukaku and captain if I don't go for Lukaku then I will captain Ronaldo I think just you know 48.8 percent owned is still quite a lot so I yeah I don't really <laughs> think I'll be risking it outside of him if I don't go for Lukaku but the lure <laughs> I guess for Lukaku yeah. is strong um, my maverick pick outside of Antonio is one that you loved a bit last week, and that's Sa. And I quite like him against Leeds with his four goals in six games so far. So he'd be my kind of maverick pick for captaincy this week if uh, if we were looking outside the the big guns. Yeah, no, I think you no know, Sa has been absolutely superb. He he didn't have a lot of action last week. I think you know I think that uh, Newcastle did actually put up um, a really good game and were you know and were quite unfortunate in the match so Maximam you know was absolutely superb again um, I do think Sa is a good option this week you know for those looking for Maverick picks but after this week I think you yeah. know his, his fixtures do sour a little bit so I just I, I, I'd be a bit careful on bringing him in just to captain mm. him in this week because their fixtures do turn after this week yeah absolutely he's more of a if you already own him then yeah, you know he's a Maverick pick captain otherwise potentially not. All right, let's move on to discussion point number two. And let's talk a little bit about Jamie Vardy, one of my mum's staples in her team, especially now that Aguero has gone. Like if she doesn't have Aguero in her team most years, it's usually Vardy and he's usually a captain. So she's doing quite well right now. <laughs> but Fergie, do you think that Jamie is going under the radar a little bit? I do it with him every season. I, I think I think it's his price point. It's just, yeah. you know, he's he's not quite at that premium level of team that you would likely captain him 
most weeks and i think yeah. that's the problem at its price similar to son you know this week uh, sorry this season and last season as well that 10 million spot is so mm-hmm. so hard when you're trying to squeeze in you know salah ronaldo maybe lukaku if you still got trent you know if you're looking at expensive premium defenders as well so i do think definitely he's going under the radar as he always seems to um he's getting on a little bit in you know in terms of age you know obviously contextually as a Premier League footballer. So sadly I'm older than Jamie Vardy. Um <laughs> you know, and he and he has got, you know, Daka, Hinacho kind of there knocking on the door as well. So mm. I think that I think that was a lot of threat. And the way that he, um I mean Hinacho in particular finished the season last season, I think a lot of people thought that Vardy would get a lot less minutes than he has, but he's just continuing to do it. Yeah. So I think if you can get Vardy in your team, mm. um, which I I can't due to the structure of my team, you know, and I've got a quite, 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 quite a template team. So, you know, I'm assuming lots of engaged managers can't, but if you can get him in your team, I see no reason not to. He just, he keeps on doing it. He's on penalties. He's class. Yeah. I mean, it's exactly what we were saying in our preseason video, wasn't it? Consistency is key. And Vardy has been consistent this season with five goals and one assist second highest forward behind Antonio with 40 points at the moment. I mean, only 12.4% owned. I think most people are looking at that 10.4 million going, oh, he's not worth it for that. But actually, if you look at the stats, he he kind of is worth it for that much. So he's definitely going under the radar for me. A lot like you, though, it would take a bit of a restructure of my team to get him in. And that's why... Holding the wild card for me is uh, is also another kind of thought process in my head for potentially maybe moving two, three up top again at some point. Great stuff. Moving on to number three. And as always, it's who is our player that if we owned this week, we'd ship out. So, OK, we've had a lot of developments in the last uh, <laughs> the last day or two. I mean, I think we were going to be airing our thoughts on shore um because a lot of people own him but we're now hearing that he could potentially make Everton so yeah do we ship him out I mean a lot of people already have um they've already made the move to a Chelsea defender what's your thoughts on Shaw well he you know he's definitely underachieved so far in the first six game weeks Mm -hmm. um I do think a part of that I do I do think United fans have been slightly unlucky you know they've 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 conceded a, a couple of deflected goals you know from um low xg and things so i do think they've been a bit unlucky he's got the one assist he's on set pieces they do face um everton this week now everton have been playing well but they haven't got um carver lewin and charleston as we know though damari gray and townsend have been performing um admirably yeah. in their absence <laughs> yeah after me saying about townsend last week it was quite nice yeah. to see him doing well so but with the latest news that Trent Alexander-Arnold may be missing game week seven with the news that, you know, highly owned uh, Luke Aylin may, you know, may or not be fit. Um, it may be a case of you may have to, have to actually keep Luke Shaw this yeah. week um, and and hope he plays. So I think he's ruled out um, of, of, of starting this evening in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. Um, but if he's on the bench, it probably intimates that he may start on Saturday yeah. um, unless... Uh, you know the manager obviously wants to wants to not play him and then give him that break. You know over um, over the international break and hope he doesn't get called up. You know to actually play for England. I know he's been yeah. been called up, but he could say he's injured. So it's a real it's a, it's a real it's a head scratcher this I think, week. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's so it's so so tough because there's no right answer, mm-hmm. especially this early in the week. No. Um, I personally think so. I I you know I was planning. On getting rid of him uh, for a Chelsea defender this week, I probably definitely get rid of him next week anyway. Mm-hmm. So if we get news that you know he isn't going to play, I think he's a definite sell. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he may just be worth um, you know if there's any signs in mm-hmm. the presses that he may be fit for this week. This weekend he may just be worth holding on for one more week because yeah. he may get you a few unexpected points before you can ship him then ahead of game mm-hmm. week eight. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts currently on Sean? Sure, it's a tough one. Very, very similar. It's the case of <laughs> with your team, it's what's going to get you the, you know, the best out of the players you have already in your team. So with Shaw, it's 
I'm kind of glad I didn't move early for a Chelsea defender for mm. him at the moment with the potential of him possibly starting on the weekend. And if he does that, then it's another playing player in my team. Not that I'm expecting anything massive from him. He's been pretty terrible, as you say, most of this season. But it's just nice to know that you have a potential player starting in your team. And that then moves where my, you know, where I get my Chelsea defender in. And do I move Trent on for that Chelsea defender? Or do I move Ailing on for that? you know, Chelsea defender. I've got a couple of options like yourself. So yeah, it's less of a sell, sell, sell as it was like at the beginning of the week. Of course, at the beginning of the week, we didn't have all of this information. There will be a lot of people now that will have already made that swap and will be sat here thinking, gosh, now I've got Trent out, you know, potentially like us, they've got ailing out or they may have you know, some other injuries in defence that they, you know, can't deal with and they've already made that defensive transfer. So the transfers have been nuts this season, haven't they? And it, it's it's situations like this where whilst I know I've lost quite a lot of money on those people that have already moved early, I'm feeling like having the information at the moment has seen me a little better off, or at least I'm hoping it, it has. <laughs> no, I think... Uh, you know, I think you're definitely right there. You know, we've been burnt, burnt in the past in previous mm-hmm. games and previous seasons by moving early on things, by, you know, by using kind of wild cards unnecessarily and things as well. And I think at the moment, the way this season has played out so far, even if you look, you know, where we are now up to game week seven, quite a lot's changed from when we were talking around game week three and game week four Mm. things will change again massively by the time we get to game week nine and game week 10 and things so i think that holding on um getting as much information as possibly can is is still quite key at the moment and the international break is massive as well because Mm. who knows what's going to happen over this next fortnight you know in terms of Mm. injuries potential quarantine covid issues having to isolate you just never never know and um so i think it's you know it's really really wise play to just you know if if your team's in good shape just kind of hold as much as you can personally mm-hmm. and then take stock, you know, after after the break then. Yeah, because even this morning now we're getting new information on Trent that's potentially suggesting that it's up to the England squad whether or not he plays, which suggests that the potential injury may not be as bad as, you know, what, exactly. what was once feared of this whole, you know, two to three weeks out, which means he could be back for Leicester. Now, the thing about Trent is we're all happy to play him against, you know, the big sides. Uh, Most of us will have been playing him against Manchester City this weekend. So I don't really see this panic to, of course, he's a lot of money. and, And that does, you know, selling him on does free up a lot of cash for other things to happen in your team. I completely understand it. But I think you've said in the past, once you sell Trent, it's so hard to get him back. And if you're wanting him going forward, then getting off of him now is potentially quite risky considering we really don't know yet how long this injury is. You know, it, it, it's just been banded three weeks um, and that isn't a definite at the moment. So it's still all very up in the air. If you... If you make those decisions to sell the likes of Trent, you have to be happy in the knowledge that it could take you a while to get him back again, unless you've got, say, a wild card in the bag to potentially undo that <laughs> that particular transfer. Yeah, I think with, with, with Trent, you know, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. He's one and a half million more than any other defender in the game, and you would have to be the most disciplined FA manager ever to think, right, I'll take him out, but I'll leave the money in the back, you know, in the <laughs> yeah. bank to get him back later. That one and a half million is going to burn a hole in your pocket, oh, and yeah. you're going to want to make other transfers anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, if you if you if you do want to take out Trent, I think you have to, you know, go with it and mm-hmm. um take him out properly. But normally we don't use our second wild card until, you know, until the chips roll around, which is normally around kind of game week twenty five or twenty six onwards. So yeah. do you really want to go without trends from game week eight to game week twenty six? Yeah. Because I certainly wouldn't. And um consistency in this game, you know, as already mm-hmm. said, is is key and he is one of the most consistent and he's and he's on form this season. If he you know, if he wasn't on form, if he was performing how he was last season when he just looked you know off it didn't make the euros squad you know but and all this stuff then i could 
you know, I could understand it, but he's yeah. already got a couple of assists. He had a 12 point a week before last, I think, yeah. you know, he's, he's on it. Every week he looks dangerous. Even in he's the weeks it. he does nothing, he looks yeah. dangerous. And yeah, I just, I can't quite fathom selling him yet. Now, if we come out of the other side of international break and we hear more news that he's out for another two weeks or three weeks, then I'll reassess the situation. But at the moment, with everything still being up in the air and them saying that he could potentially still make the England squad, that just doesn't sound like an injury at the moment. I want to be kind of second guessing and getting another player in for personally. But before we just move away from this, there's a lot of people that have asked me about Torres or whether or not we would keep him. Obviously, he has two uh, goals, tasty run of fixtures after Liverpool. Um, What do you think? Like, is the minutes, the last two games he hasn't played, I think? What would you do if you had Torres right now? Would you? Would you? He shift hasn't played. Him? He hasn't played, and yeah. and worryingly, he hasn't played in Champions League either. It's not like mm. you know they're, they're kind of rotating him. He just um, hasn't played. It, it seems that since De Bruyne and Foden have come back yeah. into the fold, he's kind of lost his place at the moment. Now, I've got no doubt that he will come back at some point. Mm. Potentially, even you know, in, in game against home to Burnley, they may decide, you know, we'll stick him in then. Um, you know, one one of the other fixtures, but yeah. I do think. Now with his price, because I think we were looking at him before early on, saying that for his price he could still offer great value even yeah. if he doesn't Crazy. play very much. Looks so good. He did. I think the problem we've got now is there's so many fantastic options around mm. the kind of five and a half million area. You know, looking at um, Townsend, Gallagher, Buemo, Smith Rowe. There's a lot of value in midfield at the moment of yeah. players who are going to play every week and play 90 minutes every week. So mm. I'm now I'm now of the opinion, and my opinion has changed of this since yeah. game you know three Agreed. or four that. He's probably not worth it now. I think I think he was at the time because normally you don't get such a raft of fantastic options yeah. at you know the five and a half million range. But I think now you do. So I think I think I'd get rid, sadly, um, because I still think he really does offer something. Mm-hmm. But at his price now, he's sucking up a lot of money and not mm-hmm. getting any returns. So yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's more difficult if you have other fires to put out now. You know, with this whole trend situation and stuff like that, but. I'd be almost more tempted to bench Trent and sell Torres if I was in a situation where I had both of them and free up the cash in Torres to make my other moves than I would be to sell Trent. Um, that's just myself personally. Mm. Yeah. No, it's the same, you know, and away to Liverpool, you know, is probably a, a decent fixture to actually mm. do that as as well this week. So, so yeah, I think he's a sell, sadly. Um, Actually, I'll just do a quick... Um, two pennies worth on Jota whilst we're here because yeah. a lot of people had a bit of a panic on the whole him playing 88 minutes last night and then Firmino coming on and bagging a brace and now of course Jota is never playing again in a lot of people's <laughs> eyes so he's a he's a he's a must sell now apparently and uh, we don't even have the information that he may not start on the weekend so what's your I know both of us have Jota right so what's your quick thoughts on him? My my quick thoughts are he looks incredibly dangerous. Um, he should have. He was so unlucky not to brace last weekend. That save that um, uh, the Brentford keeper made was absolutely mm-hmm. out with it. It's it, it's one of the best saves I've. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I've ever seen. It was absolutely was unbelievable. Like, save. Oh, no. How how has he done that? And I was watching it over and over and thinking, how how has he saved that? How? You know, there, there was oh. there was nothing wrong with the finish at all. He was just it's, it was, it's just it was, it was the world class save. <laughs> um, and the week before, obviously he had that. Yeah. You know, miss as well. Miss. So he's, he's definitely getting the chances. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think Jot is the kind of person that if you know, even if he does have the have the old bench, in looking at looking at the stats, he does tend to play more minutes than we think. And when Firmino is, is fit and available, he, I think he starts most games um, either in, instead of him or or with him. It's not very often he doesn't start. Even when he does start, he's guaranteed you know twenty odd minutes at the end anyway. At yeah. which time he had scored in that period. So I think he has enough upside at the moment mm-hmm. to hold him because you know he he you know. If you if you compare him and Torres, Jota gets a lot more minutes. He gets lots more action. Um, he gets a lot of chances, <laughs> yes. which we know. Um, you know, he plays um, in that number nine role, edge of the six yard box is where he's missing his chances. You know, mm-hmm. he is really right involved in there. So, yeah, I think even I'm last personally... night he had a screamer on goal that was saved, like what an epic save by the goalkeeper there as well last night. So you know, he's he's definitely right amongst it, isn't he? 
I, th- I think I'm holding and, you know, see, see in a couple of weeks, but, you know, I, I can see him getting a lot of minutes, even if, you know, even if over the next six games he plays, he starts three and comes on in the other three. I still think, you know, you get a lot of points, a lot of, a lot of value there still, I, you know, I personally think. Yeah, absolutely agreed. And yeah, I think a lot of people are probably just a bit kind of nervous about the whole Man City situation, which is, you know, understandable, but we don't have the information yet. We're all just guessing that he doesn't play on the weekend. And I'm just kind of in that stage where I'm like, well, how do we know he doesn't just go really strong and play all all four of them, you know, Mane, Salah, Firmino and Jota against Man City. After all, it is Man City. So, uh, yeah, let's yeah. wait again, as we said a bit earlier on the information and then make a decision rather than panicking about it before we, we know. OK, fab stuff. Let's move on to number four. We've discussed who we would get rid of, but let's chat about who we'd get in ahead of game week seven. So, Chelsea defence is pretty popular. <laughs> Fergie, what's your thoughts on them and potentially who you would go for in that in that Chelsea defence? I think my my favourite player to go for would be Alonso. Um he's the kind of player he's he's so frightening to watch when you don't own him, you know. How many times do you see him whistling <laughs> shots past the post? You know, he's had he's had shots um, you know. So, you know, save this season. He's had shots cleared off the line this season as well. He's just so so dangerous. Um, he's a bit more expensive than obviously, um, you know, Rudiger and and Christensen and some other options. But he would be my number one choice. Yeah. It looks like it looks like he's nailed. Um, the only problem we may see now, obviously, is a bit of rotation due to Champions League and things. But mm-hmm. he looks to be number one. He he didn't have a fantastic game. Against Man City, I don't think, but I still mm. don't think he did masses wrong. And it, you know, it, it is it is Man City, and he's been incredible um, in all the other games. But he being by my, my number one choice, nailed an option is obviously Rudiger, and a big question, you know, facing all managers really is whether to take the 0.7 save and potentially mm. go for Christensen. Yeah. Now we have heard this week of Reese James that he, you know, he uh, he could potentially be fit after the international break, which puts that whole James Aspilicueta Christensen sort of triangle, you know, at the spot like Rudiger starts every game basically he's fit. So I think in terms of the player, I think I like the one I was excited about would be Alonso. In terms of the one I would have who is nailed to play, who has a bit of attacking threat, it would be Rudiger. I I can't get excited about Reese James. I just don't think he starts enough. Um and Aspilicueta Kind of the same, even though Aspie can obviously start in that um, centre back spot yeah. as well. He feels like a lot um, of money, Aspilicueta, at the moment for what he's delivering. I think another couple of weeks that could be a different story, but just at the moment, he feels like he's a bit too pricey for me. Really. Yeah, mm. yeah, same, same. Okay, um, your boy Sa, would you take a one week punt on him with Leeds? I know we discussed him a little bit earlier, but. Uh... <laughs> I think the punt which I would go for this week, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but um, Chris Wood at home to Norwich, it just seems to be ah. target Norwich. Like Burnley, yeah. um, so Burnley have got Norwich. Wood has looked, he's, he's looked okay. He did score late on last week against yeah. Leicester, but it was the yard out. But it's target Norwich time for me. If I was just having a one week punt before playing a wild card, mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with going for Wood against Norwich. How about you, Lynn? Yeah, I. Hadn't really thought about Chris Wood, if I'm honest, but I love the idea of it with Norwich up next. I think uh, Takure, maybe, potentially. Um, going under the radar a little bit with, you know, Gray and Townsend doing quite well. No, I mentioned Townsend last week, but yeah, Takure with his two goals and three assists just seems to be kind of plugging away there. Obviously, he has Man United, which potentially could be a tough fixture for them. But, you know, with some problems in defence... You could see the likes of Decore or Townsend or Gray grabbing a little something there against Man United. So I think if I was taking a bit of a a short-term punt rather than a one-week punt, it, it would be potentially on Decore this week. I yeah. think it's a really good shout. And, uh, you know, he's really, really cheap for what he offers, I think. And I think when Calvert-Lewin, Aaron Charles are back, I can see him, you know, being even more yeah. 
potent and attacking again definitely okay lastly let's move on then to our fifth and final discussion point and i think a good discussion could be as we touched upon it earlier is it time to move ronaldo onto lukaku for the fixture swing if you aren't on the freemium setup of course because lots are wild carding this week what's your thoughts then a little bit more detail than uh, than in the captaincy bit on uh, the whole lukaku versus ronaldo thing yeah i think you know I think for me, and this is the, you know this is what I always think about premiums. For me, it always comes down to captaincy. So I don't think in isolation that any player is worth twelve and a half million, you know, around that without the captaincy. So it's, so in other fantasy formats where there's no captaincy, I very very rarely spend my cash on these really premium players because they have mm-hmm. to basically score two or three times as many points as anyone else to actually make them value for money. Yeah. Um, if you look at at, at Ronaldo past. This week, you're probably not going to captain him, I think, until I think it's game week 15 is where they're mm-hmm. home to Palace. But after this week, they've got Leicester, Liverpool, Spurs, Man City, uh, Watford, Chelsea and Arsenal, which are all, you know, all reasonably difficult games. Mm-hmm. You can't see, you, you know, you can't see United having a field day against any of those any of those players. Country um, Arsenal, but hey, <laughs> that's well, just no, my I, pessimism Arsenal, there. <laughs> Arsenal have turned the corner and obviously they beat my... We have, they, fingers crossed. We have. My Spurs... <laughs> Very comfortably this weekend, so you know, yes. I, you know, I think, you know, I think United will win a few of these games, but then you look, you know, you compare them to Chelsea's fixtures, mm. whose whose next few are Southampton, Brentford, Norris, Newcastle, Burnley. Even after that, so they then they they then got Leicester United, but even after that, they've got Wofford, West Ham, and Leeds. <laughs> so it's just this really really extended yes. run. So mm. so for me this week, that every time um, I make a transfer and and it's really really hard. To take a player out, I I have to be at peace with the transfer for me to go it you know into the game week and you know and no matter what happens, just be like, well, that's that's fine. Mm-hmm. And I think the peace I found this week with taking Ronaldo for Lukaku is it is a long term move. Yeah. It also frees it up. I think it's 0.8 or 0.9 million to enable me to actually make a transfer I want to make as well in terms of getting a Chelsea defender. Mm-hmm. So. Even if Ronaldo scores a couple this week and Lukaku doesn't, and you know you look back and you think, what a horrible, horrible transfer! <laughs> I, I'll be trying to think of it as in the grander scheme of things, is that you know I've got my team set up now going forward how I want it, and not having to worry about Lukaku rising over the break or Ronaldo mm-hmm. dropping and all this kind of stuff. Lukaku yeah. is in. I think that is the deciding factor in what is making me comfortable with the move is that it is a very much a long term move for the next Mm -hmm. you know eight or nine game weeks um where's your head at on the change at the moment yeah so I find it quite tough to sell on Ronaldo he's being quite kind to us and I think that Everton fixture could see him get a little something which does make it tougher to move on to Lukaku but you know, that, that whole situation with Jimenez against the Southampton defence, I just, I can't get my head around Lukaku not being, you know, the bully in that situation and doing something similar there, which is making that a lot easier to move from Ronaldo to Lukaku for me. And then long term, I just prefer the move. I think I am reassured by having my wild card. So if going to Lukaku doesn't really work out or it's looking like they're both really smashing it, it just feels like knowing I have that wild card to either go back to Ronaldo because obviously refinding that money can be can be quite tough. You know, it's it's almost the Trent situation all over again, but with Lukaku and Ronaldo, it can be tough and it will mean you'll need transfers in the bank to do it easily whereas having the wild card does make it a bit easier for people like us I guess because it means you can always just use that to restructure your team and if we get to say 15 and and we've managed to go all that time without Ronaldo Brees still smashing it then I think that does allow us to potentially take a good look if we get that far with the wild card to take a good look at it and think actually now is the time to go freemium because um, Ronaldo now has a, an even better run of fixtures where he's done all right in these tougher run of fixtures and as you say Lukaku even past that 15 still has good you know good fixtures so you could consider you know the move to the freemium then but in the meantime that extra cash 
allows me to get a City defender or a Chelsea defender. Okay. So for the moment, I think Ronaldo to Lukaku is kind of on the cards for myself too. Let's hope we're not regretting it uh, next week, Naomi. Yeah. Well. Just crying well, into our cornflakes. As we said, it's a long-term move, so we just it have is. to be at peace with it. We just have to be at peace exactly. with it. <laughs> as long as Lukaku can get us just one return. And we are recording this before the Champions League fixture, just in case anything <laughs> happens sure. this evening to Lukaku. And all of this discussion means nothing. Um, yeah, we should probably just point that out. But yeah, you know, we just have to try and kind of think it was a long-term move and we, you know, we played it like that really and we were comfortable with it yeah great okay that's it you guys that's our five things for game week seven let us know your thoughts in the comments below we love to hear from you you can find fergie's link to his twitter page in the description below if you've enjoyed the video then please do like share and subscribe so it's goodbye for now from myself and a goodbye from fergie best of luck everyone for game week seven and enjoy the international week thanks again for joining me buddy Nymphia times fergie out. Thank <laughs> you.